Analyzing the cerebrospinal fluid in patients with suspected meningitis is really useful as it can determine the type of meningitis. But how do we interpret CSF results in patients with suspected meningitis? CSF is taken from a lumbar puncture. It can be analyzed to check the levels of glucose inside the CSF. It can also be analyzed to determine the levels of protein inside the CSF. The type of cells inside the CSF can also be checked, as well as the opening pressure of the CSF. The appearance of the CSF can also be observed. Let's first start with the glucose inside the CSF. When analyzing the glucose inside the CSF, it's also important that we have a value for the blood glucose levels so that we can compare both values. The normal range for the CSF glucose is about two thirds of the blood glucose levels. A low CSF glucose level would be around less than 50% of the blood glucose levels. A low CSF glucose could indicate a bacterial meningitis. It could also indicate a fungal meningitis. It could also indicate a tuberculosis meningitis. A normal CSF glucose level usually indicates a viral meningitis. So this is how to interpret the CSF glucose level. Let's now look at the protein inside the CSF. The normal range for the CSF protein level is between 15 to 40 milligrams per deciliter. The CSF protein can be raised in all types of meningitis. Often in viral meningitis, the protein elevation is not as high compared to the other types of meningitis. If the CSF protein is normal, that can indicate a viral meningitis. Let's now discuss the type of cells that might be seen in the CSF. The total white blood cell count is usually raised in meningitis due to an infection. If the cells present in the CSF is predominantly lymphocytes, that can indicate a fungal meningitis, it could indicate a tuberculosis meningitis, it could also indicate a viral meningitis. If the cells present in the CSF is predominantly neutrophils, that usually indicates a bacterial meningitis. Let's now discuss the opening pressure. The normal range for the opening pressure is typically between 10 to 20 centimeters of water. The opening pressure is usually raised in bacterial meningitis, tuberculosis meningitis, and fungal meningitis. If the opening pressure is normal, that is highly suggestive of a viral meningitis. Let's now discuss the appearance of the CSF. The appearance of the CSF can also be useful. Normally in a healthy patient, the CSF appears clear and colorless, but it's important to remember that the CSF will also look clear and colorless in viral meningitis. If the CSF is not clear and colorless, then it could suggest other causes of meningitis. So we've discussed how to interpret these different parameters in a CSF profile. Let's now summarize the CSF profiles for the different types of meningitis. Let's start with viral meningitis. In viral meningitis, the CSF glucose is normal. The CSF protein levels are usually normal or raised. The predominant cell type present is the lymphocyte. A normal opening pressure indicates viral meningitis and the CSF usually looks clear and colorless. In bacterial meningitis, the CSF glucose will typically be low and the CSF protein will typically be raised. The predominant cell type present will be the neutrophil. The opening pressure will typically be raised and the CSF may look turbid. In tuberculosis and fungal meningitis, the CSF glucose will typically be low in both types of meningitis and the CSF protein will typically be raised in both types of meningitis. The predominant cells will be lymphocytes in both types of meningitis and the opening pressure will be raised in both types of meningitis. The CSF can look cloudy in both types of meningitis. So this is a summary of the CSF profiles for the different types of meningitis. Interpreting CSF results will help give a good idea of the most likely cause of meningitis. Further investigations such as gram staining, CSF cultures, and CSF PCR will help confirm the diagnosis.